Hey guys, thanks for joining. Um, we're here with Sports Shoes Live, um, and today it's going to be myself, Stephen Scullion, and I'm just waiting for Emil to join. I think I can um, invite him, or he has to invite himself. Um, so basically today, Sports Shoes is teaming up with Under Armour, my sponsor, um, and we're going to be going through some um, endurance workout, which will cover pre-run. Let me just invite Emil joining. So basically today, I think the both of us um, are going to go through different, uh, I'm going to go through pre-run, some kind of exercises that you can okay. include okay. before you run, and Emil is going to go through post-run. Um, hey Emil, um, so Hi, how you I doing? guess to get started, my name is Stephen Scullion. I'm an Under Armour professional from Ireland. I'm back in Belfast training under lockdown, like most of you guys have probably had to deal with. Um, I'm a marathon runner. I'm the reigning Irish marathon champion. Um, and I qualified for Tokyo 2020, now 2021 Olympics at the beginning of this year when I was fifth place at the Houston Marathon. Um, and yeah, so... Yeah, it's been tough enough training under lockdown, but hopefully little um, videos like this and, and at-home workouts and little tips can, can help you sort of keep going. So I'll pass it over to you, Emil, if you want to introduce yourself. Okay, hi guys. Um, my name's Emil Paris. Um, I'm 22 years old. I'm from Bradford in Yorkshire. Um, I'm an Under Armour professional runner uh, with Scullion. Um, I race 10K and 5K. My PBs are 13, 37 for 5K and 28, 38 for 10K. And I'm also the European under 23 bronze medalist of the 10K. Excellent. So I think the run of things today, guys, like I said, I'm going to go through um, a little pre run circuit and things that you can do. I think if I was to give little tips and advice to anybody starting up running, is not to expect your body to be able to just go out the door when your muscles have probably been stiff from sitting around or work or and um, so there's a couple of little exercises that you can do just before you go out the door for a run that will help reduce injuries things like that and um, there's going to be seven exercises um, calf walks heel walks hamstring walkouts lunges adductor lunges some glute stuff and then a little bit of core thrown in at the end. Um, and basically then, once we go through that, Emil's going to take you through some mobility stuff, um, which again, I would probably say could be done pre or post run whenever you have time to do it. Um, and hopefully at the end, we'll have a little bit of time for you guys to ask some questions um, and we can you know, talk through whatever, whatever you maybe find interesting today during the workout or you know, potentially questions about running, our running, our lifestyle, our training, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, really excited to go through this. One challenge I probably would say to you, um, along with Under Armour, as you know, um, Under Armour shoes have the ability to be connected. Um, you can basically connect your shoes straight to an app, the Map My Run app, um, and it's automatic and you don't need to carry your phone and things like this. You just have to set it up before you leave the door connect the shoe to the app and off you go. And so the challenge would be, if you do start implementing the likes of what me and Emil show you today, to start keeping a track of, does your consistency improve? Does your cadence improve? Does your speed improve? Are you able to run a little bit more each week without getting injured? And that's maybe just a really good platform to start doing things like that. So look, I'm gonna start, um, and the first thing we're gonna do is some calf walks. I, I did go through the exercises, but I'll, I'll go through each of them again as I'm going. And we're basically just starting with the lower limbs, calves, um, and then we're moving up hamstrings, quads, glutes, hips, and a little bit of core. If you've ever been in the gym, you'll know that when you do the first exercise, it often feels a lot tougher than when you go on to the second or the first set, and then you go on to the second set. And that's basically because the muscles aren't switched on yet. So some of the stuff we're going to go through today is to help get those muscles switched on before you even leave the house. So without further ado, I will start. I'm going to go up and down the living room, some calf walks, and then I'll move to heel walks. And really think about form. All the time that you're running, you should be thinking about your core being engaged. Like if you're doing calf walks, and the key word there is calf, 
Think about your calves working. Think about your calves being strong, etc., etc. So here we go. First exercise. Some calf walks up on the toes, and you can walk about ten paces. Flip, I'm walking back. Again, up on the toes, thinking up nice and tall. And basically what I would recommend with those calf walks is if you can get about 40 meters worth of um, a stretch, you can, you can go back and forward. With things like this, you don't need to overdo it. So you might just do one set up, one set back, have a little bit of rest, one set up, one set back. So let's repeat that. Up nice and tall on the calves. Thinking about keeping your balance. Coming back. Excellent job. So the next thing we're going to do, which is kind of similar, but this time you're walking on your heels. So that time you had your toe up nice and tall, thinking upright. This time you're going to walk along on your heels, pulling your toes up towards your shin. And we're just going to start working on the shin muscles a little bit and getting them switched on. So let's do a set of that. Switch it back. Toe pointed up to the sky, keeping the body nice and upright, the core engaged, glutes engaged, toes to the sky. And I think what you're going to see from all these, these exercises, they're not that difficult and they're certainly not that time consuming. And if you do start to add little things like this into your training program, you just might start to cut down the amount of trips you have to do to the physio, etc., etc. So now we're going to do hamstring walkouts and hamstring walkouts you're essentially going into a glute bridge, get your body on the ground, into the glute bridge position, pelvis on the floor, up, push through the glutes, and then gradually walk your hamstrings out. I would recommend going left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, and then drop, reset, and start again. And we'll do that five times. So I'm down, I'm about to get into a glute bridge position. My core is strong. Down the go, pelvis is on the ground. We'll take the pelvis down, push up through the glutes. Left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, drop. Reset, up, push up. Left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, drop. Reset. Remember, pelvis on the ground, core nice and strong, glutes engaged, push up through the hips, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, drop. I'll leave it at three sets for today. Don't want to keep everybody super long. So again, the key with that is keeping the core engaged, keep the glutes engaged. What you don't want to do is be lazy with the core or have your... If your pelvis isn't, if you can't, when, you're, when your back's on the ground, you shouldn't be able to reach underneath um, your, your back, basically. So that's you lowering your pelvis and keeping it strong on the floor. Reminder to push up through the glutes and get the hips nice and high. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is some lunges. Everyone should sort of know um, what's going on with lunges. And um, I'm going to do lunges forward and lunges back. So hopefully you can see that. I'm probably going to recommend... We do eight forward, eight back, etc., etc. Nothing too crazy. It's not supposed to hurt you. We're just starting to prime the muscles. Opposite arm with opposite legs. Lunge. Lunge. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to go backwards. One, two, three. Making sure the core stays engaged. Four, up nice and tall. Five, six, seven, eight. Superb, guys.
So now we've basically covered calves, you know, our calves, our shin muscles, our hamstrings, our quads, we should be getting pretty primed. If you don't own um, a TheraBand, I'm gonna use a TheraBand, I'm gonna put it around my ankles, I'm gonna do some crab walks. I would suggest that you do crab walks, again on the 40 meters, down the room, back up the room, down the room, back up the room. Um, if you don't have a TheraBand, I'll show you quickly that you can do some exercises without it. Um, so I'm gonna go down the room, back up the room, and then I'm gonna show a couple of clams, et cetera, et cetera, um, that you could do if you don't have a TheraBand. Right, is this something you do every day, Fillion? Sorry, buddy? Is this something you do every day? Like, put pre yeah, when time permits, but as we've said, it's not a super time-consuming thing. What about yourself, Emil? Um, yeah, I tend to try and do it, especially before sessions, just so you can get all the muscles activated. Sometimes yeah. I don't tend to do it before, just an easy run. Reminder, guys, core nice and tight, glutes firing. Everything wants to be kept quite solid. If you can keep your body, one of the things when you're racing 10Ks, half marathons, marathons, if you can keep your body nice and solid, in the, whether it's through the core, whether it's through the glutes, whether it's through the abs, you waste a lot less energy. Um, so now I'll show you quickly a couple of things you can do if you don't own a TheraBand. And, and you're just gonna lie on your side and raise your, your right leg first, as you'll see. Line on the side, right leg, raising it up. And then obviously you can swap, left leg. And you'll feel, make sure you can feel that you're lifting from the glute. Super. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna take you through today is basically just, hopefully this whole time you've been thinking about your core, so I think what people don't realize is that every exercise you do, you can be thinking about your core. Um, you shouldn't just be doing lunges. You shouldn't just be doing hamstring walkouts, et cetera, et cetera. Always be focusing on the core. Keep the core strong. Keep it activated. Keep it tense, et cetera, et cetera. So the last thing we're going to do is just some mountain climbers. We're going to get down in the press-up position and drive the right knee to the left elbow and then the left knee to the right elbow. And so we'll do eight on each side. We're down in the press up position, nice and strong. Right knee, left elbow. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right, guys. Good luck doing that. I am starting to sweat a little bit. Um, and by now, you should be thinking that you're ready to go for a run. The first time that you do this, you know, you might feel a little bit tired. You might feel like you worked a little bit, but your body will get used to it. And I promise it's going to pay off. So I'm going to now pass it on to Emil. Um, and he might tell you now some stuff you could do pre or post, whatever suits. Okay, guys. So I'm going to take you through a little um, mobility routine. I find this useful to do. On the, on the morning, after you get out of bed, just to uh, loosen everything up, just to uh, reset your body to normal. And then also just for recovery, it gets the blood flowing. And then, um, yeah, that just helps with feeling better the next day. So it's something that you can do twice a day. It only takes 10 minutes. So, yeah, it's something, something you might want to incorporate into your routine. So I'm just going to start off with a um, simple calf stretch. So shall I tell you guys now how to do that? Just... Place the heel on the floor, bend the knee forwards, and then just, you should feel the stretch in your calf. You can just hold that for about, just until it starts easing off. I, I usually find about 20 seconds, and just for, just for one, and then move on to the next side. And then you can just repeat that maybe um, three to four times on a, for each exercise. Um, but really, it's just up to you, the, the duration, depending on how tight you are. But I find I'm usually quite tight, so I, I need to do quite a few sets. So then change again.
then if it starts if it starts easy enough you can just get a little deeper into the stretch and then hopefully just loosen everything out one thing i would um just be cautious of though is to to not spend too much some people like spend hours stretching i can find that um that can make you feel a bit lethargic when you're running because it um, decreases the muscle tension um which is a uh, and it's important to have the right balance of that when you're doing your training sessions especially Okay, so, so the next one we're going to move on to is a deep squat with uh, a twist. So this is a little bit of activation as well, but uh, the twist is just bringing the mobility into that. So I'll just take you through that now. So you squat down. Remember to squat through your heels. Keep, and then place your arms in between your legs and then push your arm against the knee and then twist and face the sky and then back up. So that'll be one rep. So you want to do five to six reps each side. So you should feel a stretch on the inside and then also in your upper body. Some people can neglect the upper body because um, if you have a tight back, a tight chest, that can affect your breathing and affect your balance, things like that. And that's all important with running because it's a total body exercise. What's your usual mobility routine, Scully? Um, so I think when I started the marathons, uh, my body, like you said, it, it got pretty tight and um, I had to start doing quite a bit more yoga. Um, I, I, I put it down as you can build as much fitness as you want, but if your chassis and that's your body gets too tight, it'll just struggle in races. No, 100%. I feel like that's a... Sort of the reason to stretch isn't to gain any real advantage, it's to have no disadvantage in training. You don't want to be going to train and turning up and think, oh, my hamstring's tied today. And I guess that's a lot about preparing for training, just making sure when you turn up that you don't have any excuses. So stretching and being mobile is one of the ways to eliminate the excuse of being too tight. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one, which is a, a knee hook like this, and then you drop into a lunge and then you twist over. So I'll just do that. In. So again, five to six on the each side. It's also a little bit of activation as well. So lunge, and then drop in, and then you twist, bringing your arm over, and you should feel a stretch in your hip flexor and all down your side. And then just five to six each side, and that's usually sufficient for me. How have you find training under lockdown, Emil? Um, I found it. I found it okay to be honest. I usually train on my own. Uh, yeah. A lot anyway, so um, yeah, it's just been business as usual, really. Just obviously, yeah. maybe not quite as intense as there's been no races. Um, so I don't believe that. Pardon? I said I don't believe that. I bet it's been pretty intense. Yeah, it has been. Well, yeah, maybe. Nine, Us runners nine, don't take five, it easy. <laughs> those sessions, but yeah, not not maybe the those sessions that get you really ready for the races, but yeah, it's true. Wise, what about you? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Um, I think like everything, you you can always find things to complain about, or you can just make the most of the situation you have. Okay, so the next one we're going to move on to. It's called a Spider Man with a twist. So. You sort of lunge down, but then you go really deep into the lunge. So your knee is almost touching the floor. And then prop yourself up with your arm and then twist up. And then you can just repeat that five to six times. I know it's not. Just build the camera a little bit more so you can see. So you get, make sure your knee, get your knee near the floor and really try and sit into your hips just to get that stretch in the hip, in the hip area and then twist. And that should just add a, an extra element to it. Once you go five to six, you can switch over. But again, it's not it's not the numbers that matter. It's how you, how your body feels. So one or two may be sufficient. Ten to twelve may be sufficient. How long have you been doing this for, Emil? Um, 
I've actually only not been doing it too long, maybe since February, so maybe Have you probably... noticed much changes? Pardon? Have you noticed much changes from doing this? I think the biggest difference is, um, like I mentioned earlier, just when I turn up to training, I'm ready to go. And if I'm if my breathing's okay, I can get down to 40 or mile or something like that. Yeah. So you might have one of them days you're feeling great, but your hamstrings, your calves, you, you might be wanting to get down to some quick paces, but if you're not mobile, then your body just won't let you. So yeah, you your body. the chassis has to be in a... Yeah. In a the aerobic system. So yeah, we'll just move on to the next one, which is a hip flexor and hamstring exercise. So just lean, knee on the floor, get that knee forward, and then just stretching, and then like this, just forwards and back, rocking with the hips. Try not to bend in the arch, the stomach like this. Keep the back straight, and then hamstring, hip flexor, hamstring, hip flexor. Hamstring. Yeah, you've got that school and you're doing well. <laughs> maybe I haven't been doing enough of this because I'm pretty stiff. Yeah, you have to be very hamstring. Maybe you need to get a few more of these exercises in. Yeah. But when when you get competent at the routine, you can sort of, uh, we call it like a flow routine. So you can really bring the time down to maybe five, six minutes of stretching, but there's no real downtime in between each one, so no, no excuse not to get it in. Okay, a couple more. And then, okay, the last one, so the last two. So uh, this is a yoga one, so you'll know this one. So you got, you start in the, the downwards dog, which is like this. Just stick your bum in there, basically keep your back nice and straight. And then we're going to progress it down, tip your head down into an upwards dog, which is like this. So we're gonna alternate between those two positions. So is this something you do in your yoga routine? Yeah, I've probably been pretty lazy with my yoga routine. Um, that's maybe where the motivation side of things slacked a little bit because of COVID. Um, but actually, yoga and mobility and this is probably the most important time to do this stuff because we don't have access to physio and massage and I think self-care is very, very important. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely true. Just yeah. keep you free and keeps you off the physio bed and then especially in Poland yeah. when the physios are on. So the final one today that I'm going to uh, put you through is downward dog into a pigeon stretch, which it sounds a bit weird, but it's quite simple. So we've got the downwards dog like before, and then so we, and then it's like a breakdance move. So I don't know if you can. Camera's not the best angle. Sorry, guys. Well, you sort of bring bring your leg like this, and put it. You sat on the floor. Your hips are deep into the floor, so you should get a really nice stretch. All in the in the glue, yeah. Scully is doing it perfectly for you, so yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. So like a little breakdowns, just ten to twelve of them, five six on each side, and then that'll get the hips going nicely. What Under Armour shoes have you been running in, Emil? Um, so, me personally, my favorite Under Armour's are the, the Hover Velocity. Uh, yeah. I wear them for, for pretty much all my all my training. It's just, for me, it's a perfect all-round shoe. It's got the Map My Run connectivity. Yeah. Yeah, all the, the new shoes do. Uh, obviously, the Machina, they do come in handy. I like to wear them for my steady runs. Maybe yeah. if I'm picking up the piggy picking up the pace um, so that because it's a versatile shoe you can take it I find it's good for a progression because if you're doing seven minutes five days it's all good uh, what about you yeah no I wear the Machina quite a lot um, and then the velocity for some sessions 
um, I guess for long runs, like you say, if I want to pick the pace up, um, I might switch. I just think it's like, personally, I think it's good to swap your shoes anyway, rather than wearing the same shoes all the time. And um, like different shoes, like make the muscles work differently. And so if you have a race shoe and a running shoe, it's better to practice in the race shoe and things like that. But um, if that's you finished the meal, should we open it up to some questions? Um, yeah. Yeah, let's get some questions in. I see there's already a couple. Yeah, I'll I'll ask you this question. Any advice on a 20-year-old wanting to improve on flexibility with resistance bands? Um, or without. So, if you think it's better without, you answer whatever way. Yeah, so personally for me, I would say a resistance band is not something that's necessary to increase flexibility. It's a good tool, but I find it's better for activation uh, purposes rather than flexibility. I guess you could use it just to enhance some stretches, but I guess for a runner, it's not really, it's not necessary. Just the basic mobility exercises, they'll just be plenty to get your, your flexibility in where it needs to be. Yeah. Is there, let me see if there was questions on up. What session are you guys doing tomorrow? Go ahead, Emil. Okay, so I actually did a session today. I did um, three times three k on the track. It was the first time I've been to the track in a long time, um, which was it was a good, good experience. Uh, it's a tough session, but yeah. Yeah, anybody... and you've just said it's not that intense training, and you're doing three times what probably most people do as a race. <laughs> um, very good. Um, okay. There oh, you go. Now Bruton says. Who would win in a race? What distance are we talking about here? Maybe we should do a range of distances. Um, but yeah, what's your what's your five k and ten k PB, Emil? So thirteen thirty seven for five k and twenty eight thirty eight for ten k. Um, well, there you go. A <laughs> meal over five k has about fifteen seconds on me. I run thirteen fifty one, maybe. Um, and over 10K, I have four seconds on the meal, 28.34. Um, so, yeah, maybe that would be a much more fun race to do. Um, okay. 10K. Find next year. Say that again? We'll find out at high game next year. I mean, year. dude, I, yeah, I hope races exist. <laughs> that would be really fun. Um, so, I mean, I'll just ask Emil some questions if other questions aren't coming in. Oh, no, we do have another question. Any book recommendations for running, Emil? Um, so I, yeah, I'm quite a, an avid reader, um, especially when it comes to running books. Um, I think it um, depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for a good story or a, or a training sort of manual, um, if you're looking for training, I'd say um, Peter Coe, uh, Better Training for Distance Runners. That's, sort of, that's a really good one. Um, Brad Hudson, um, Run Better from 5K to Marathon. That's a really good book. And then Mark Byer um, by Toby Cancer. That's a, that's another good book. A lot of uh, inspirational stories in that one. Um, what about you, Scully? And have you got any favorite books? Um, yeah, so I, I, I try not to read too many books that's like about training and things like that. Like I think the more, when you, when you get to like say the level of me and a meal, like the more you read or explore, it can just confuse you. And you know, hopefully that's why you have a coach to help with your training. But I, I do have a couple, I, I've just read um, running man which is really cool about like a trail runner and it's just very different um, and then I like to read books that are you know Kipchoge was very into reading books to help the psychology and the psychology behind running and being calm and races and um, I, I really think I would tell everyone to read Tim Paradox by Steve Peters Dr. Steve Peters who worked with Team Sky um, it's just really useful for controlling your emotions and races. Um, and, I, and I'll leave that that. So we'll go for like two more questions. Um, we're almost out of time. Um, and so one question is, how should the average runner be preparing for their next marathon? Um, whenever that is, I guess I can answer it. And then um, the next question for Emil was any advice for an inexperienced runner? So um, I'll take the, the marathon question and look, it's, it is tough for us all. We don't know when marathons will return. Um, I, I believe they will. Um, you know, it is a matter of time. There is virtual marathons right now, and, and I know that's going to become a bigger thing. Or, um, you know, marathons might start to exist in a different way where there's less participants. But 
look, to answer the question, as of right now, start working on your weaknesses. Um, this is a really good time to, you know, get back in touch with maybe 5K training, 10K training, and, and focus on the things that could then, before your next buildup, if you're slightly better at 5K or 10K, and then you go back to your marathon stuff, you might find you're able to run a PB. And, and you know, that's, that's what I would be suggesting. Definitely working on your weaknesses um, and, and taking full advantage of the time that you have. Okay, so I'll go with uh, any advice for an inexperienced runner. Um, I'd say to, don't put any pressure on yourself. Um, that's probably the biggest one. Just enjoy it because I think once you get into a habit of enjoying it, that's when you can go out and just get consistent training. If you look at running as a chore, then I doubt you'll have a sort of a happy relationship and a long relationship with running. So just enjoy it as much as you can. And then if you keep enjoying it, you, the progress will come itself. Um, but I think just don't get carried away as well. Just keep, keep consistency, but not too much. Don't get greedy. And yeah, so that's probably my my advice for the inexperienced runner. Good, man. Well, look, guys, uh, I can't thank you enough for joining us on uh, Friday night. Um, again, if you're not following Under Armour Running UK or Sports Shoes, you know, keep following them. These guys are doing really good videos. Um, we appreciate your time on a Friday night. This video will be saved. And so, you know, you didn't have to remember everything today. You're able to log back in and, and follow both mine and, and Emil's session. Um, and look, have a good Friday. Stay safe. Um, do enjoy your running. Running can get really serious and, and really stressful really quickly, and that doesn't need to be the case. Um, stay, stay healthy, stay happy, and, and really enjoy what you're doing. Okay. Thanks, Bye, guys. Neil. How do I end the video? Oh, yeah. there we go.